this channel, this episode, future episodes will get pretty brutal, will be inappropriate at times, um, especially from being across the world, and we both have our own sense of dark humor, and this channel may offend some people. If you are some of those people, then sorry, not sorry, but let's get into it. How are you doing today, Darcy? I am fine. How are you? I'm doing good. Still slightly waking up, finishing like my fourth cup of coffee. And then it puts me asleep, so drink all the caffeine you need. I am a caffeine addict, unfortunately. Um... I could literally drink three, four cups of coffee in the morning and probably about four or five monsters throughout the day. Still sleep like a baby at night. So I th- think I have a problem, but hey, we haven't got there yet. Oh, it's not a problem. You just enjoy good things. Uh, I mean, if you want to consider coffee good things, then sure. I just don't like the uh, I don't like the utter outcome coffee brings, especially after that first one. It's never a good thing. <laughs> Um, this it's a TMI <laughs> that we won't discuss. But I drink collagen coffee, which does worse for you than a regular black coffee. So imagine having a collagen coffee in the morning. Well, I nothing quite says hello get you more from than that. I drink coffee that is literally called Death Wish coffee. It is excessively strong and not ex- probably not exactly the best coffee you could have. Um, it definitely messes with me internally and it's not a good feeling <laughs> well, i'm trying to think what coffee that we got recently because we were blue mountain beans blue mountain something so apparently it's a really good coffee and then we've got a grumpy one now and a san francisco one from costco now but two coffees is enough <laughs> now i know being over um overseas and everything like that you guys probably don't have dunkin donuts um we do. You actually do have a Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, holy. We don't have them in where I live. No, we do have Dunkin' Donuts. They're in Glasgow. Wow, okay. I th- but I don't, uh, where we where I live, we don't. Dunkin' Donuts has been here for about four I years. honestly oh, thought Dunkin' Donuts, Donuts was it's an American thing. Not, uh, okay. I know Starbucks is all over, but I mean, I thought Dunkin' Donuts was just an American thing. But, okay, yeah. We have Starbucks, but there's coffee shit. There, it is. This coffee is there, shit. Sorry, Starbucks, but it is. It's not good. There, it's not good. I'm sorry, but I'd rather literally drink my own pee than drink their coffee. I will this. agree. The only reason why I do like going to Starbucks, though, is they do have a secret menu that you can actually create drinks off of. And you can actually create a butterbeer coffee. And that is, like, the only reason why I go... What, from yeah. Harry yes. Potter? Ugh. So... I hate Harry Potter. <laughs> but that is, that is one of the main <laughs> reasons why I do go to Starbucks. Other than that, they can suck on my left toe and call it a day. Because, yeah, no, that's... Their coffee is absolutely... What's wrong with your right toe? What's, what's wrong with the right one? You're just saying suck on your left toe. So, uh, what's wrong with the right one? Uh, yeah, I'm predominantly left-handed, left-footed, so... It'd be more um, coordination with my left foot while they're doing said sucking of left toe. So I, I just I don't want to be a bumbling mess with my right foot. Okay, then. Fine. I was just... <laughs> so, um, but anyways, yeah, we're going to get into the top five discussions of our uh, favorite movies that we either grew up on or anything that we have enjoyed recently. Um, if you would... Start us off with one of your favorite movies and why you enjoyed it. Okay. Um, we did the disclaimer at the start. I just wanted to double to I just wanted to say that what I was introduced to, we've discussed this before, at a younger age may not be socially acceptable now. Um, so what my obviously was a, what my parents allowed me to watch they never really stopped me from watching it and there's a lot of things that are questionable which we, again we have discussed again everybody's parents different but my number five is misery by stephen king um not only has it got really good cast you've got kathy bates and james can the book is uh read the book plenty um but the visualization that stephen king brings to any sort of movie, especially when he writes on the movie like he does in this one. I think there's a few things in the movie that they couldn't actually touch on. Well, like when he break, like the breaking of the ankles, for example, that doesn't happen in the book. He sets him on fire, 
and she hits him with an axe. So I think I think I'd be too gruesome for nineteen ninety. The you were born mate. So <laughs> that you know, kind of gruesome story. But no, that's again because Kathy Bates, man, that is just ma- made her like it sounds bad, but a typecast as a mentalist. And think of the stuff she's been in now. She's been in like American Horror Story as well. She's basically she's an amazing actress and I absolutely I just love, love Misery because it's I love Kathy Bates. I love that, Kathy Bates. She is definitely an ama- amazing actress. I know it's taken super fine to each Yeah. Hostel yeah, baby. and I know recently too, I just seen an article not too long ago, um that she is actually a survivor of breast cancer, I do believe. And she still keeps But going. she still keeps going. Absolutely. I just I I seen an article not too long ago that I think she had had, had to have both of her breasts removed due to it. Um, but she is still kicking. Um, I don't know if she is in the American Horror Stories, the little spinoff series that they did from the yeah. the original. I don't know if she's in them yeah. or not. I haven't actually fully watched those yet. I've been a little leery because I'm when it comes to spinoffs. I'm kind of like, yeah. You can see it, shite. I think that about prequels, I think that about sequels, I think that about remakes, I think they're all shite. And until you prove otherwise that something's actually been good, then make good argument. Uh, well, I, 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 I can actually, I can absolutely agree with you that most prequels, sequels, or remakes are pretty shitty. I mean, there's not too many that I could actually think of off the top of my head or on you know, one hand that actually have been halfway decent enough to actually be considered a good remake, sequel, or prequel. Um, I guess the only thing out of those that I can actually say, because, I mean, they technically would be considered prequels, but at the same time not, would be the the Hobbit series for The Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I haven't watched it because I've seen the first three movies a lot, because, again, when they first came out, it was like... There was nothing like it. It had been in the making for God knows how long. But I've just got no kind of interest in it at all. The only thing about Lord of the Rings I like is the <laughs> the thing on YouTube. They're taking the whole Gotcha, gotcha. Out. So, uh, what did you, uh, besides the visualizations, was there some misery that you absolutely loved? I, Kathy Bates was just amazing in it. Um, just like, because when you think about it, uh, Super fans and stuff have been going on for ever. As long as there's been celebrities, there has been super fans. And the most recent issues uh, with the internet and being able to find people and docs. Imagine if Kathy Bates' character Annie actually had the ability to find them whenever the fuck she wanted to, basically. I wonder how if they did remake Misery, would they make it like that? Finding, you know, absolutely everything about said celebrity. Uh... The fact that they became, it was weird because they kind of had a relationship even though technically she was keeping him there when she shouldn't be. She knew it was wrong, yet she continued to do it anyway. And James Can again, played it really well, always trying to be basically, he needed her. That's the thing. He needed her because of that. Again, she needed him. And see if you, have you actually watched the... It's not the prequels. Well, see the thing that was on Hulu that was like you know describing like they kind of it was the TV show that they did one that was kind of like the Dark Tower and then they went on to the kind of misery story. It was on Hulu, and it was showing you about Anne Wilkes. You know when she was before she became you know <sighs> crazy Anne Wilkes. Yes, I I, I do remember that. I do remember that. Um, it's been a very long time since I've watched it on Hulu. Um, it was kind of one of those things that I seen in passing and just kind of play in the background as I was normally doing stuff around the house. Um, but yes, I do remember that and I do remember it going into like, More detail, yeah, because you didn't know anything really about a backstory at all. And I liked how they did that. And again, picked really good actress to play Kathy Bates's character and everything like that. Uh, but again, that got cancelled <laughs> because again, it wasn't really. They didn't have the audience, put it that way. Probably the wrong time that it la- launched. But you know what it's like? It's a cycle of things like, yes. yeah. you know, vampires, supernatural. And if you're uh, getting it the wrong... If your TV show, movie, or anything like that is or book has been launched at the wrong time when that's not on the cusp of happening, you're fucked. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Simple as that. You actually are. And there's actually a few instances throughout 
some days that crack me up a little bit because I'll literally be sitting there going through the, the house and I'll drop something or I'll say something stupid and then subconsciously, I don't know why I do it. And it's, it's actually probably because of misery. Actually, it is because of misery, to be honest. Um, I will literally sit there and go, oh, heaven to Betsy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love the fact that it's like it's not kind of foul language. She's it's brilliant. It's, again, for you just reminded me of the language compared to you know some Stephen King or oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That, um, the language is like they've basically taken her as like it sounds bad, but a stereotypical woman from like a certain well, parts of America where they don't swear and they do think they do say things like that, like they're stuck in a time warp from the fifties. Oh yeah, you know absolutely. I mean? That's just the way they are, and that's. It was definitely a lot of research that she went into to actually obviously play that character. And again, how many people can say that they bloody do that today? Yeah, there's only... And it's one of the roles uh, that Kathy Bates did. I always remember her from Misery, and she has been in loads of... She was in Dolores Claiborne, and she was brilliant in that as well. Yes. From another Stephen King part of the universe, she was amazing in that as well. And again, she's always known for Misery. Most yep. people will only know Absolutely, that. and... Yep, it is a very thing. iconic role, and and uh, touch a little bit on um what you had said about there's not too many actors or actresses these days that actually prepare and put themselves in the mindset of a role. I could at least name a few others off the top of my head that are well known actors that absolutely have done that, and uh one of them's no longer here. What? Um, that would be Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger. Yep. Jared Leto. Jared Leto, and then, um, well, actually, we'll we'll stick with the uh, we'll stick with the whole American Horror st- uh, Story theme. Um, Evan Peters. He um, mm-hmm. he. I think yeah, I just okay. read an article last night while I was just bored and watching TV. Um, after I quit, uh, got off the game. He spent eight and a half months preparing. And putting himself in the mindset of Jeffrey Dahmer before he did that series. And yes, I didn't like that series though, because they tried to make him a victim. Yes. Uh, and I was just like, nope, they victimized the serial killer. Do you know what I mean? I was just like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, I mean, really? There, there's, there's quite a few aspects of it that I didn't like, but there are a lot of aspects that I did like about the series that. Did make it worth a watch. Evan Peters being one of them. I've watched a couple of episodes. Evan Evan yeah. Peters being one of them because, it's a shame because he is yeah, his acting's phenomenal. He um he's just got so much talent. Come a long way since yeah, America. absolutely. And then I mean, even his the first season of American Horror Story where uh, it was the murder the murder house his his acting was subpar, but throughout that season you could tell from start to finish to where his acting went it's like he didn't want to be you know the kind of actor where you know you're only kind of yeah you were all right do you know what i mean it's like no i can be better i can do better you know what i mean that's the kind of that's why i think he's picked every time the first season of american horror story is the fucking best one out of them all i'm sorry but i actually lost interest what one was it oh there was the one in the house uh where Kathy Bates, Lady Gaga was in it. I think that was one of the first ones she was in. Oh, it was after Hotel. So, Roanoke. Roanoke, yes. One. Roanoke, West Virginia. Mm-hmm. Was... Yeah, um, Roanoke wasn't exactly my favorite. Um, trying to think. There was another one. I think it was like 1985 or something like that. Um, I can't exactly remember the the exact series that was in. I thought it, Evan Peters did a really good Trump, though, do you not think, where he covered himself in Cheetos? I swear to God, see when he had the Cheetos in his hand, I was like, he's not going to do what I think he's going to do. And then he did it, and I was like... Oh, oh. yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I'm... My... Oh, God, I, I sat there, and I started watching American Horror Story. I actually started... Didn't even start on season one. I actually started on um, Covenant, and that was only because I didn't really... I, like that. I didn't really think it was going to be a great series, and then I started watching Covenant, and then I ended up not watching any seasons after that until I actually watched uh, Murder House. And then I that was I watched all of them. I wasn't necessarily too big of a fan of Hotel, but I liked it. Um, 
Roanoke was I liked it because it had eighties. Oh yeah, absolutely. It was eighties. It was very eighties. That's why I absolutely loved it. And I liked the kind of twists and turns. But we've discussed this before. We always seem to we seem to, our brains are right at the end of the movie and we've not even started because our brain is working out, you know, the story and the different scenarios and I fucking annoys the shit out of yeah. me because even though something is a very good film and has a really good story, my brain's just at the end. And people wonder why I read the first page and the last place, page of a book. That's how I read a book. Yes. I don't know why. I just prefer it. I, I mean, so I actually, honestly... I do that. I honestly do the same thing, and it's a lot to do with... I grew up reading a lot of uh, Japanese, Chinese, anime, stuff like that. So I always read from left to right instead of right to left. So... Even when it comes to, uh, we'll just say it, because I did read it numerous times. Um, and I, I, Stephen King, brilliant, brilliant author. So I absolutely read his books back and forth, um, upside down, in the dark. It didn't matter. I was always on a Stephen King kick when it came to reading his books. And I always would read the last page and or the last chapter before I would actually read the full Burke. Book. Yes, yeah, it's yes, just it's oh the God, way so I like was, it. and <laughs> when it came to it, when it came to Stephen King, it did not matter if you read the last page or the last chapter. The whole book was still going to actually end up being a thrill ride through and through, and you're still going to be shocked at that last chapter, that last page from his books alone, just because of how he sets up his story. Exactly. And and that's the and that was the kind of the same way. There's there's another actor. I don't know if you know, Dean Koontz. Yes, I love Dean Koontz Phantoms. Yes, I I grew up reading a lot of Dean Koontz books. Uh, my mother actually had a trophy case of Dean Koontz books. He she absolutely loved his books, and she had. I think the first book, to be honest, that I read of Stephen King's, because oh, my mom was had it and I was still younger, was Dreamcatcher. You've got to be shitting me, mate. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I fucking love that book, and I fucking love that movie. Uh, that's... Hell the... Oh, my God. So, yes, Dreamcatcher was the very first book that I read of Stephen King, and that was actually one of the very first mo- Stephen King movies I lied. Not one of the very first Stephen King movies that I've actually watched. The very first Stephen King movie that I watched, and it was before it, um, was, uh, no, Silver Bullet. Oh, really? I absolutely love Tommy Knockers, but I only watched it because, you know, Tracy Lord is in it being an actress, apparently. Yes. It is actually. So, <laughs> I don't so think she can we're going to go into, we're going to go into my number five. number five spot, and my number five spot is... It. And it is the it is the original Tim Curry. It it's not the remake. Thank God um, I don't have to start that. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, just the visualizations. The the younger kids that they picked for the first part of the series. The 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 adults that they picked. I am a huge fan of each and every actor that the actor and actress that they did pick for the second part of the movie. Um, I loved each and every one of them. The acting was on spot, even though Tim Curry himself has said that he did not care for his acting in the movie. What? His role as, his role as Pennywise will go down in history. Um, she paid as fuck, I, and we loved it. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's just how they brought the story together um, for... Well, the time period that it was, it was ahead of its time. And that's, you know, one of the other things that I love about Stephen King is even though the movie was ahead of its time, it was set back in a certain time period. So the way that they portrayed the year that the movie was supposed to take place in compared to the year the movie came out in, they did a very good job at showing that. Um, Now, obviously... There are certain aspects of the book that they absolutely could not put in the movie. Nope. Yes. And today's standards, oh, yeah, just talking about them. I mean, there's been many articles, and I will touch on them a little bit. And, I mean, 
we did have a disclaimer. This will get inappropriate yep. at times. The one part of the the book that they could not put in the movie alone was after they kids originally beat Pennywise and then they have a giant orgy. Yeah. Yeah, kids are Stephen King Stephen King has a way I, I'm pretty sure Stephen King was heavily, <laughs> heavily medicated on something. <laughs> but Stephen King has a way of writing something to where I'm surprised he didn't wind himself up in jail for it being basically and child I'm... pornography. Yeah, because if that was today, you would not be allowed to even have that today, especially with the shit that's going on in the world right now. Seriously, can you imagine? Oh, the absolutely not. A bunch? Oh, oh absolutely not. You'd have the Karens coming out from oh, the grave and the Kevins, to slap him in the and face. And the Kevins, apparently, is it a female? Yes. Is it a male is yes. the Kevins. Yep, the, the the Karens and the Kevins of this world will just come out and they will everything. they will ask to, they will ask to speak to the manager. Oh god. Um. Yeah. <laughs> and then the manager's manager, exactly. We wouldn't get away with it. Uh, but again, no, it's like, but it's in a book. People can read it. But again is like if they uh, what what are they gonna remove every single book that fucking offends someone? That's the thing. Most likely yes. Yeah, I mean counselor Karens. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's gonna be my number five, and like I said, it it's the it was the perfect yeah it was the perfect role of it did have a small little bit of comedy aspects from the Losers Club, yes. but at the same time it was thrilling, it was scary at some aspects, and it just more more intensely out of everything was psychologically abusive to the mind so what because you... right uh because i mean you gotta think the movie played off of these kids fear yep so being a child uh, let alone when i had originally watched it i was still a child myself i was probably nine ten years old so if you you gotta think if there's a clown out there starting to feed and you know destroy kids' lives just based on their fears yet you're gonna grow up real quick not really being afraid of much no that's the difference between kids today and kids then like we was just oh absolutely absolutely i mean the the amount of stuff that you know you and i grew up on you're 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 seven years older than i am you're not much older but even i'm ancient as fuck thank you oh my god (laughs) you are not you are not you are you are you're born even though i was born in 1990 i have an old soul and the amount of i'm ancient (laughs) oh blah 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 (laughs) but the fact that the fact that we both grew up in a time period where parents were yeah parents yeah they 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 let us watch movies that you know by today's standards you know parents would be like don't watch that you're gonna you're gonna get bad nightmares i grew up with nightmares i i grew i grew up fighting the demons from movies that i watched because i was raised to do it well again the movies that we watched were don't know about you but they were kind of like of an escape of the things that were happening in real life which were the things that were causing the nightmares and causing the issues and like those movies didn't when i watched them i didn't actually find them to be scary or intimidating or caused anything because real life is fucking scarier in my honest opinion and especially when you're going through things again with childhood like i was bullied from the ages of four to 16 by the same kids and that was by far more scarier than you know putting on a horror film and just escaping for 90 minutes because films did actually only go on for like 90 to 95 minutes back then now it's you'd be lucky if you fucking get a movie yeah. at last for 90 fucking minutes you know and I mean? if, so, if it's yeah. not if it's not if if it's not 90 minutes you're looking at like 130 minutes of pure just bs right <laughs> exactly so my question to you is see compared to the first it movie technically tv movie because it was in what two parts um yes. what do you think of the new one both parts obviously tell me what <clears throat> you feel could have been done better uh what you maybe that uh better. tell you tell uh, the thoughts of the remake were, and then i'll tell you what my thoughts were. Oh. Mm-hmm. be as honest as you possibly can mate oh. so the remake 
there was a lot of aspects of the movie I liked, but there was so much that I didn't care for. For the simple fact is, a lot of it they made to be comedic. Now, yes, it was very. I know the meme. Yes. Was very long now, long. now, don't get me wrong. I know the original had a comedic parts to it, but it stopped. It, too, it stopped once everything really got serious. And so did the the remake, but they still tried to throw a little comedic stuff in there. And it was like, it's not needed. You guys want to revamp a series. Even Tim Curry had come out and said, and it's, it's, this is kind of what like makes me a little, I guess, upset with Tim Curry. He's even said that he absolutely loved Bill Skarsgård's Pennywise. He thought he landed Pennywise right on the head. It was better than what he could have done. That is, Tim Curry has come out and said that in an interview. And I'm like... Was he drugged when he said that, really? He he, he may have been. He he absolutely might have been. Um, But there there was a lot of aspects to Pennywise that I did care for because it was more closer to the book than the TV series was. But Tim Curry's It was almost identical to the book. Able to do a little bit more of the stuff that was in the book visually. Um, no, no orgies. Still no orgies. Still no orgies, though. Um, but they were a lot of, like the opening scene to it. It was a lot more visually, in my opinion, better because if you actually watch the two movies side by side, they pretty much were identical at the start. Um, yeah. But then after that, you know. The actors that they picked, I thought, did a very good job. Um, minus, again, they were trying to be too... Honestly, they were trying to be too cheesy. Um, the... the vi- Is there such a eh, thing? You'd be surprised. Is there such a thing? <laughs> you'd be surprised. Um, now, the visual aspect of the time period, period that they were in, I think it was, what, the 80s in... The remake instead yeah, of the 70s, oh, 70s even? I think seventies for the uh the original. It was either sixties or seventies for the original. I can't remember off the top of my head. I felt even though it was even though it was the eighties and you could tell by the fashion and stuff, even though they were trying to be older. See especially see when they find the moving book from the original one, like the picture that moves and you've got Pennywise in the background from the original movie. And you know Pennywise is moving. Yeah. That kinda I felt seventies, not eighties. But again, we yeah. I don't know. Did they specify the year? I think, it was the 80s? Well, yeah. I think they did specify the year because I think the route that they were trying to originally go for, and this is original before the movie came out, was I think originally because of I think it was Bill who was reading the back of the 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 backstory of what happened and Pennywise being in a lot of history stuff. I think that's kind of where they were trying to go with it. They were actually trying to make it more of a sequel to the original series because it was at a later time and um, basically kind of playing off the original, you know, Pennywise didn't actually die. So we're going to go, you know, into another sequel that's 20 years, 10 years ahead and Pennywise is back now. That's the original route that they wanted to go. And then I think they did just go with a remake instead. And it was just at a, 80s time period instead of the original 70s or 60s and yes visually um even soundtrack wise for the first part of it the remake was subjective to being 80s but there was so much to it like i just i couldn't i couldn't get past a lot because i did grow up loving the original i so it was it was hard for me to actually sit there and say i love the remake because again there's not too many remakes out there that are better than the original. And even though the remake did get a lot of praise, myself personally, I did not find it better than the original. Some of the acting was shit, especially in the first part. The second part, there was... Well, I guess we'll finish with the first part. What in the hell was with the dancing? Yeah, I know. That... I'm sorry, but some of... I, beautiful I, people went really really well along with that and apparently he used that that was apparently his way of getting into the mood was listening to beautiful people i said really you really had to go there and just give people of the internet like you know the tools to rip the piss out of a movie that people have been waiting a big chunk of their lives to see you know in this day and age you know what i mean rather yeah. than you know 
the past where it was a it was a it was a TV show. It was a mini series, and I've said this to plenty of folk before. I said you don't actually realise the stand was four parts for fuck's sake. I was like, it was a humongous book, and along with lots of shit, and therefore they had to break it down into a series. But in the UK, they actually broke it down into eight, I believe, for the BBC. So it was literally an hour, like on a Sunday, you would get that. So if you missed it, you were fucked because it was before you know you could record your TV. Apart apart from obviously recording on VHS. See Which, now, I mean, like, now that. I like didn't know. TV. Now that I did not know. I didn't know they broke it down to an eight-part series for the BBC because here in America, we literally – a two-part series. It's like – What? For The Stand? Oh, The Stand? No, I was talking about it. No, The, well, the Stand, yeah. yeah, The Stand, I – Um, God, I can't I remember. Watch, uh, I think The Stand well, might have I didn't been actually watch uh, The New Stand because the Todd's in it. So I didn't give her, I didn't want to, when he came out in support, that actually broke my heart because I was a huge Stephen King fan as a teenager and also, you know, growing up and through my 20s, my 30s and things. Yes, yeah, still in my 30s. I will keep saying that. <laughs> Just, um, I look about 12. So there we go. Um, so the whole thing with the, I've lost my train of thought now. <laughs> it started oh my goodness uh no the whole thing we like again the stand being remade i was really pissed off about that but when he came out in support of her i was just like nope you're not getting my money mate i'm not even going to watch your shows i'm going to have nothing to do with it and that's what kind of broke my heart about stephen king and i was surprised he even made it into my top five to be honest because of that one reason yeah well well i mean with me uh like don't get me wrong. There was, like I said, there were so many aspects of the, the, the remake that I liked and so many that I did not care for that. Will I watch it if it's no. on TV or something? Sure. Why not? It, it's a Steve, it, it's, it's, it's a Stephen King movie and I don't, I will watch it if it's just playing what on TV and I want like something to play in the background. If we watch a watch party of it, we do our own commentary. Again, that, that would, would be actually, really I, fun, I think if it was you, if it was uh, myself, you, and maybe a couple others that party and doing commentary for remakes for remakes nonetheless and i think that would be a blast i think that i think there would be so much shit talking going on that i don't even think we'd actually get nope. through a whole movie in nope. an hour I think there would be so many pauses so many um discussions to where it probably we, we would probably end up getting um we would probably get end up getting shot by somebody because it's like there's going to be always though that one person that when we upload this they're going to be like, how dare you yeah, talk that's about your this? Yeah, that's your opinion. Blah, blah, blah. Like, <laughs> okay, you're okay. The... We found... We, 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 <laughs> we found a group of people that absolutely hate this remake. Sorry. We're going to go with this absolutely group of great people that all have the same exact and opinion the is, on different why ages, this movie was shit. Different parts of the world. Do you know what I mean? So it's not like we're all sitting there being a dick about the movie exactly, all around exactly. the same table, man. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Unless the table's like the size of the universe. Exactly. Because, I mean... Got you from Scotland. We can uh-huh. get hails from the UK. Scotland is still part of the UK. And then you got me from America, and I'm sure there's. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just finishing my talk. <laughs> I'm just saying. Right? We, we, so <laughs> will we try number fours then, so before we go on a riot about geography that I'm shy at, by the way, just giving you a warning. <laughs> well, now yeah, number, so four your number four is classic golf, classic alternative. And you can't swing a cat. Without hitting one at Halloween, the crow. What? The crow. All right. The original crow. None of the fucking John Connor and all that shit playing them in the third one. I'm talking about the original crow with Brandon Lee because again that movie, yes. dark and yes. dank and looking like shit, still to this day is awesome. And will I watch that if it's on TV? Fuck yes, I will. There's no way, no chance in hell. I am not watching that movie. I love the fucking soundtrack. And again, I'll probably talk about that quite a lot because you don't get very good soundtracks these days with movies, and that fucking annoys me. And the, no, the you do not. The soundtracks used to come out you before do the not. movie as well. So you get to hear the music and then you get to see the movie. I spent a fortune getting the original Crow on CD, you know, having it imported. There's a few things I've had to have imported, obviously, because I stayed yes. in a small town. So like, you wouldn't have had, like, you know, we had one music shop, it's called Our Price. It was shit and over like price. So when I got the CD, again, it was the same time where I got the Spawn soundtrack, which was like 19 quid, which is like what, maybe 20 or 30 dollars. 
So God, Spawn. He that didn't make it because if I was here to list my favorite movies, I'd be here all fucking day, probably all year, probably forever. I just never stop. <laughs> just keep going. Hey, that means we just exactly. We just have plenty so of episodes. The thing that I, what? But I was gonna say, you know, uh, before you get into you know the things that you like that, just give a R.I.P. to Mr. Brandon Lee. He was a great actor, um, especially. The crow. I mean, I just feel so bad. I feel bad and guilty but, of the fact that he didn't get to, uh, well, to bask in all the shit basically of that movie being released because so many different, again, alter- different alternative folk like that for different reasons. Like I said, I loved the movie, like the fact that it was dark, really, really dark. The fact that uh, they did it like a kind of hell's kitchen type place where it was like it was like a war zone, and some people actually have that. I live in a place that is so fucking quiet you can hear a fucking pin drop so i don't have that i say but again that movie again with them talking about the real life aspects of how they couldn't live their lives and they were always basically on edge because like was it the gangsters and all the fighting and things and it's so sad see that song it won't rain all, it, it won't rain all the time that's the song i picked for my funeral by the way because if you're you're not gonna cry at my funeral you'll fucking cry at that song because it's sad even get, brings a tear to my eye, um, which, again, the goth doesn't cry very often. So <laughs> I'm just saying I'm not a robot. I do rust when I hear that song. <laughs> I love the fact that it has family, love, there's loss, there's tragedy, there's so many aspects of that movie. Um, and see when you hear the music burn, see when the crow, yes. sorry, yeah, the cured burn comes on and he starts putting his makeup on. That's what I felt like when I was a teenager putting on my white, you know, white out and, um, you know, just going to pretty much be myself, like showing the world, this is fucking me, get fucking used to it, go fuck yourself. That's pretty much what I was like growing up, right up until I had my son and I had to calm down a bit. So, um, Agreed. that was pretty much me, like putting on your war paint to go out. That's what my mum used to call it, war paint. It's like an extra protection, basically, of against the world. And that's what it was like when he put that makeup on. And he put, basically, his, like, obviously, the clothes that he wore in his band. Eric and his change coat. Come on. The infamous change coat. Yes. Every single alternative boy and girl had a change coat. And I still have mine from my... I still have two of mine. from One from when I was 16 and one in my 20s. I still have them. Can't get them over my shoulders because of the gigachad body. But still, I have them for nostalgia for purposes. You know what I mean? So, oh, I can be gigachad. So, the uh, cool thing... I never said it. Just how you threw well, that That's in what you'll so find like out. Me. I'm really like this. And some things are really serious when I say them, but I'm making meaning them to be like in jest, but it doesn't always come across that way. But I'm glad that you get that. So for me, The Crow was, again, one of those films that I, I, again, blown away every time I see it. I just, the music, just that song, Bum, but The Cure Man, it literally, everybody thinks, see when they hear that song, the first thing you listen and the first thing you hear and see is like him putting his makeup on in The Crow. You always think about that song. Yes. You never not listen. Yes. You never not see it. And then you see a lot of the time people see like his death, the way he was killed. And then you see Sarah like mourning him and how he's came back to protect her yeah. and things like that and like uh, then you've got the rings uh that's like real love lasts forever as well i had an ex that bought me one of them. yeah i had I mean, an ex that my, bought me a ring like that <laughs> my that's mm-hmm. oh did he yeah my favorite aspect of the the crow movie um through and through were was the soundtrack even though everything i loved everything about the soundtrack for the crow was unbeatable um he just had nine inch nails cure yeah, there was just so much to it that it just it made the movie and like you had said there's not too many movies out there today that actually have a soundtrack worth listening did they even to release them? um did they even release so albums yeah, like they used to I, I mean if it's on i guess apple music or something like that they probably do but i don't I, I, yes, you know, I love physical, physical copies, copies anymore. Give me all the physical copies they have to have. Yeah, I don't. I don't think they do anymore. That's and hard. I don't. You know, I've gotten to the point where you know, as much as I hate to say it, I've gotten to the point where I've kind of acclimated to the fact that we don't have video stores no more. We don't have really that many stores anymore that sell CDs or DVDs or VHSs anymore. So I've gotten to the point where it's like, well, why do I need half this stuff anymore as much as I would love to grow up with it? And I would love my son to actually grow up with it too because there's a couple um, 
electronic stores here that do sell VHS players, DVD players, stuff like that, that I want to go into it's and buy a VHS it's player to hook it up to actually have. Yeah, I mean, it is. Um, but I'd love to buy a VHS player to go in to hook it up to my son's TV in his room and have him grow all the same original Disney movies that I grew up on or just have him grow up watch a movie and then him get so upset. I know this is a horrible joke, but him get so upset because when he goes to pop that movie back in and it's not playing, it's because it needs to be rewound. He's got the little thing. <laughs> and and he's going to come up. I know. They could just hit play and then hit start from beginning. Ta-da. No. Rewind it. You gotta wait that five minutes for that, that movie to minutes, fully rewind. Then and you have to sit like there. Forever. Yes. And then you have to sit there and you have one of two choices. You could either fast forward through all the trailers that they put at the beginning of the movie and quite possibly miss the first two minutes of the movie because you can't really tell with all the little slashes and the video uh, cuts when fast forwarding. Or... You have to sit there and watch the trailers and then be bored and then sit there and see something that you might actually want and then be like, hey, I want to get this one next. So I, I, he's not going to – he's – as much as I'm, I want to buy him a VHS player for the the, the simple things that they'll, they're never going to see. Like I, I've even told my uh, my wife that like, he will end up growing up with a CD player Ooh. so he can feel the struggles of walking around oh, and it's skipping and all the time. That one, one bit where it was literally – Keep skipping. <laughs> this is like the most this movie is bad for that. Uh, yes. And then I was like, he will end up growing up at one point in time, even when he's in school. I don't care how much he gets picked on for it. He will end up having a flip phone. And we are going to buy him one of those stupid little track phones that you have to spend money on. And you can only talk to somebody oh, after a certain gone. amount of time or a certain hour so of the day true. for free. Seriously, I don't even like that. When it happened to me for saying he, it loud, you want him to love. He will grow up on the. Well, he, he's got. He's gonna learn the hard way that life does not give you handouts. It's not all sunshines and rainbows and and fresh squeezed lemonade. He's gonna learn the way. Yes, will I actually probably get him a an iPhone or a Galaxy or whatever he wants? He may end up having that, but. When he's in school and he wants to start sports and stuff like that to where he's needs to be picked up, stuff like that, he's going to have a flip phone for it. He's not going to have a, a fancy – he's probably 16 where he gets his first job to where he can start paying the phone bill. That's when I'll probably buy him an actual phone. That's just – I mean, that is exactly why I'm doing it. That's how I was raised. I didn't have my first actual smartphone until I was – I was 19 years old. When they actually came out as video phones, man. How ancient am I? And again, I will say it constantly. But no, the three phone came out with the video, and everybody was like, "Oh my god, that's like so futuristic." Are you fucking kidding me? It just basically made well the internet more interesting when that came out. <laughs> Yes. Just think of all the yes pornography yeah, on your I phone. Yeah, I had music anywhere. videos on my phone. Like, I spent a fortune like buying like Sesame <laughs> Down videos and stuff because I didn't have like MTV. I was that poor. Do you know what I mean? It's like because it's just like no, no MTV. So or, or VH1 or Scuzz or if you have a metal version of Scuzz or whatever. Um. So literally, I had like music videos on my phone. I was sad. I didn't have pornography. No. No, I didn't have pornography. I just had music videos. That's a sad individual that I was. <laughs> and also angry. See, I also want to get him – see, I'm at the toss-up of getting him a CD player and or make him feel the struggles, and I'll eventually – I eventually want to That'll buy myself a, a laptop or a PC. Point. But That'll be a um, But I do I, – I was thinking of making him – thinking making making him of go through the struggles oh, of having I an player. Oh, I remember when I had player. 256, man, and you could like, <laughs> get a couple of songs on that, and you just felt like they – and see when I got the 512 one, I was like, oh, eight songs or like, nine songs or whatever, or ten songs, and then it was just like, oh. But if you put a Pink Floyd one on there, you're fucked. I mean, like two songs. And that's oh yeah, absolutely. But no, I I mean, let's see. My first MP3 player could only hold ten songs, and then they started coming out with the little iPod touches, I never iPod the, Nanos, I always stuff like that, Zoom. where it was like four gigs. Yeah, the Zune. I had a Zune. I love the Zune. Um, but then I also I also ended up getting I ended up getting it was called Insignia. My favorite MP3 player. I wish I still had it today. I had over 48,000 songs on it. Um, 
but the reason why is because the original storage capacity of it was only eight gigs but it also had it was probably i think it was one of the very first ones or very close to the first ones that had the um the oh, SD card God, that expandable was storage. That was classy as fuck when you had that. And and I had I had a two terab or a one terabyte because two terabytes weren't out yet. I had a one terabyte SD card that I put in there and I had so much music on it. And it was a little two inch LCD screen. And I had music, music videos. I think I had maybe like fifty movies. They're on just it. showing off, man. Um seriously <laughs> of course a bunch of pornography on it i was like 14 years old and i had a and i had a shit ton of pornography on it but um that was Wait, i bet you they the wouldn't have that on it now it'd be fucking random shit from tiktok uh, do you know what i mean no that shit they would have on it they wouldn't have pornography or anything like that they just have shit no it'd be it'd be tiktok it'd be uh it'd be so much stupid shit on there it'd be my, my phone would but my my iPod Touch or my you know MP3 player would be so probably full of nothing but memes and. Is there any questions you have for me about the crew, or did I answer them? You pretty much nailed them yeah. all on uh, on well, on spot. Yeah. I mean, like, hi, hi. I mean, they're <laughs> going through the yeah, going through the crow. I mean, besides sitting there saying that it was an amazing movie all around the soundtrack, there's not much you can honestly say about the movie itself because it was just absolutely visually stunning. The the for its time that it came out, it was again, it was another movie that was definitely way ahead of it um and again the the soundtrack i mean that's the that's gonna be the number one thing that that movie besides the movie itself has done very well people again download it on spotify and whatever and i still own this you know the cd and things like that they don't put away do you know what i mean there's certain soundtracks i will not play now so. yeah what yep so going off my number four uh so it's 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 a little bit of a changer from literally the first three okay. that you and I just discussed. I grew up loving this movie. Um, I grew up loving it because it was one of the very first movies that initially had animated and real life aspects to it. And it a lot of people always are like, ah, that's not why you like the the movie oh is God. Who Framed Roger that's... Rabbit. Yes, believe it or not, believe it or not, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Jessica Rabbit is not the reason why I love that movie. I was like yes, the creepy little girl hot. obsessed with Jessica. No, that I mean, she, she, she. Don't get me wrong. She was absolutely hot, smoking hot. I'm. She was pretty much everybody's crush when the movie came out. But the movie, myself, the reason why I love it is because it was the first time that they have brought real life aspects to an animated movie and combined them together. And for the time that the movie came out and they did something like that, it was huge. It was stunning. And just the acting alone in that movie was worth the watch. Apparently. And then yep. you've got films like what, like Space Jam, Flubber, and all that type thing that came afterwards that had similar aspects. Yep. And and not only that, it had a... It had two two people in it, yes. Two people that were that are amazing mm-hmm. actors, amazing. Christopher Lloyd and Bob mm-hmm. Haskins. So, I mean, the movie had so much going um, And just being, like I said, from the 80s, for them bringing a movie together from an animated to a real-life movie, and combining them, it the I mean there wasn't much to it. The soundtrack was all right. Um, I think they could have done better with the soundtrack. But it depends what the budget was. You know, like they were obviously it, doing that sort of project at that time. What you know, kind of where the funding would be. You know what I mean? So it's like if they could do like a bit more with the soundtrack, that could have went into maybe the movie. Maybe it was more of like get let's get the movie out more than you know concentrate the music. And again, the music for me is really important. But again, that film for being out in nineteen eighty eight is have they remade it no thank fuck <laughs> no there's there's that's one thing that i hope they never do because that is i would hate to see but ra- that I would hate to movie. see what uh, their animation character like the main character would be you know i mean that's to make everybody happy <laughs> no that that would be i mean that would be absolutely ridiculous because i mean yes i mean did you did you watch the sonic the hedgehog movie by any chance my son watched it. Apparently, I did watch it with him, but I can't remember it because I was probably pissing about in my phone. It was that entertaining. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, when they first originally 
release the trailer for Sonic. This is why this, I'm kind of going off of Sonic and yep. Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yeah. Uh, if they were to remake it, um, there was so much backlash on what Sonic oh, it was looked terrible. like. It did not look good. It looked weird. I've got to say. No, in the very first trailer, yeah, it was horrible. And then when they came out with the, when they released the new trailer, and then they released the movie, that was more Sonic. That was a lot better. But that very first initial trailer to Sonic the Hedgehog, that is what would be the scariest aspect of remaking Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Like you would absolutely ruin not only Roger Rabbit but everybody's childhood crush. You would definitely more than likely ruined Jessica Rabbit. And I don't, anybody who grew up with Who Framed Roger Rabbit, who grew up on Jessica Rabbit, who enjoyed the movie in general, I don't think they'd be able to handle it. I will. Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's kind of where I stand on that one. I don't really have much to go on with uh, Who Framed Rabbit because, like nostalgic. I said, I it's certainly very nostalgic and obviously it reminds you all the time, you know, when you were happy and things like that. And that's yes. what a lot of movies and songs and books and pretty much everything like that everything visually is i really do feel there's a nostalgic feeling when you watch it whether it's horror and it makes you feel good like myself or true crime people think i'm creepy as fuck but there's lots of people like me so <laughs> i'd never thought i would ever meet any exactly we're That's all okay. weird and freaky too it's fine so i always feel it's a very nostalgic feeling when you watch a movie or listen to a piece of music so even discussing the movies now with you it's very nostalgic for me uh, just thinking of you know watching them for the first time or getting to watch them do you know what I mean so it's just like because we've sp spoken about like the way obviously different you live in America I live here in Scotland something that was obviously normal for you growing up might have not necessarily been normal for me and vice versa obviously the seven years that are between us <laughs> not many as you say but enough <laughs> sorry not try to be condescending or anything but I you mean, know I mean it's just like it's different for everybody, but again, we can all agree, you know, in most aspects of the things that we're talking about. There is a little bit of the, the discussion and also maybe a wee bit of argumentative, but it's not in, yeah, like I said, it's not anything. We're just discussing something and we're not always going to agree or have the same experience. Exactly. So, exactly. So, um, well, let's, uh, let's go with the top, uh, your third one. Are we ready? Number three. I am sorry, Event Horizon. Before the Matrix, there was Event Horizon. Fucking amazing sci-fi horror movie. Gore had everything. Had Sam Neill being fucking amazing, as per usual, guy is a legend. Again, most people know him from things like In the Mouth of Madness and Jurassic Park. Again, another big nostalgic movie for probably both of us. So this movie, I saw it by accident on BBC late one night after coming back from work and... I just chilling out and I randomly watched it and went, oh my god, this is amazing. Because I fell asleep halfway through it, not seeing the movie shit, I fucking love it. Um, so I ended up going to our version of a video like Blockbuster, because we didn't have Blockbuster here for a long, long time. So I went to Global, found an extra rental copy on VHS and I bought it and literally watched it over and over again with my friend. And every time we watch it, we find something else that we didn't pick up before. For first of all, like, I hadn't seen the film for maybe about five or six years. I was watching it with my husband and I turned around and said, see, obviously, because television quality has got better since, you know, the original time when the movie came out. I was speaking tiny fucking TVs. So um, it was the eyes, you know, when he he's having a flash back or a flash forward maybe because his connection to his ship uh, and you see the eyes and it's like his wife sitting with no eyes and there's eyes watching i never noticed that for ages and this is what i like about this film there was loads of mystery loads of like darkness if you haven't seen the event, event horizon you have luna you've seen event horizon so event horizon was basically a ship that was created by Sam Neill to make space travel quicker. So he decided to use something called a black hole. Now, come on, the fact that it's black hole and in space, come on, he fuck. Do you know what I mean? It's never a good fucking thing. I mean, it's like, just let the fact that it takes months to get from one solar system to another. Just fucking take, you know, instead of taking the risk of maybe going to a hell dimension and this is where this went, they don't know where it went. They just knew that it disappeared off the... Well, radar basically, no one could find it, and then randomly it appeared back. But there was, they sent a ship basically to go and retrieve 
And that's where it gets a whole lot of creepy. And there's so many, again, there's, what, Sean Pertwee's in it, uh, Lawrence Fishburne, Sam Neill. I'm trying to think who else is in it. Uh, Jolie Richardson. Again, it was a lot of pe- like British folk living in it. Yes, Jolie Richardson. It has got a lot of uh, British people who might have not been in, you know, big things. Like, Sean Pertwee is basically, he's in Gotham. Do you know what I mean? Some people might not have, you know, remember him. Obviously, he was yeah. Alfred's. So... Event Horizon for yes. me has gore, has a very, very good story. Uh, I'm glad there hasn't actually been a sequel, although I would like to see because I don't want to get, well, you're going to get a fucking spoiler. If you've not seen Event Horizon, it's out for like 30 years, just fucking go watch it. So if I spoil it for you, I'm sorry. No, I'm not. It's a fucking ancient <laughs> film. If you've seen The Matrix, you should have seen fucking Event Horizon. My God. So, rant over. Um, so, Agreed. the whole story where, you know, they get out and all that, carry on, and they've went through all this to basically see one of the lines I really, really like. It's like, we need to go, we need to go home. And he goes, I am home. But he says it really demonic. The more times he spends with the spheres and the ship, because it's actually, the is it the ship is controlled by a sphere, isn't it, that opens the black hole. So you can actually obviously travel to a certain destination. But you don't know the destination you're supposed to be going to. You could get to your destination or you might not, depending on obviously where your ship ends up. And that was the crazy, and it's also says Liberate Me. And they kept saying, it's no, it's Liberate Tutti Me. It means save us from hell. So they think just that they were wanting them to help them. But he's like, they're like, no, this is a fucking warning. Don't fucking come look for us. We're in a fucking hell dimension. They are literally going to own you. Do not fucking come for us. Do not pass go. Please, just go home. But what do they do? They do not. They do not. <laughs> I would really like to see where they actually, you know, not the way it ended. It was like, it ended with them all screaming, wasn't it? When they woke up at the, you know, in their pods and stuff. I'd still like to see, you know, maybe if they did something when they got back to Earth or wherever they lived to see how it actually affected them. Are they still connected to the ship? Because the ship technically has something on them because it, the ship is uh, using all the, like, again, f- aspects like it. Using fear, your own worst fear. Like there was a mum on the ship and her son had a disability and she kept imagining the worst, even more the worst that our son would go through and that's what the ship played on, that she was trying to come home with her son but she went on this mission, one last mission before she would go home and they played on that. They played on everybody's basically fears and memories and trauma to basically break you down and then Sam Neill becomes crazy and naked and floating about the ship completely ass out and everything and just like, you know, this is how I look, deal with it. And he's very demonic. Yeah, Event Horizon, again, had very good music in it as well because, again, it's the makers of The Matrix and they have that kind of industrial-type futuristic music going through their movies as well. And, again, the story is brilliant. The first Matrix film was good, but the rest of them are absolutely Absol- cack. Yeah, absolutely. I, 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 did, I did love Event Horizon as well. I have a special edition that when you open it up, it's the front of the ship. When you open it up, because it's the original, like, it's an actual, like, prop type thing that's been built. None of this cardboard shit that you get now from special editions. You open it up and it's all the dead bodies inside, you know, when they actually go into the ship. Oh, so I'll cool. take a picture of that and show yep. you. Oh, that'd be, that's, that's pretty cool. I don't really have much else to say about Event Horizon. You pretty much, you pretty much covered all the, you nailed the, the, the points because on the head Because I'm passionate, on um, man. I'm not a psycho. I'm... Yeah, the, the movie, <laughs> yeah, the, the movie in itself. Even for a movie that was 30 years ago, that is still, and dare I say it, because when, when, you, when you think of nostalgia, you think of these things that are, you know, that you enjoy seeing growing up, like the first episode of Rugrats or hearing the original tune to your favorite TV uh, channel coming on or something. So that's, that's what I think of nostalgia. Yeah, that's what I think of nostalgia, but when I think of nostalgia in a different way, I do think Event Horizon, because in a way, it pretty much kicked off a lot of sci-fi stuff. There was a lot to expand on from that movie that had so many points that could have been used as a a base to a lot of movies. Do you not think it would be good if they maybe did a prequel on how the actual Event Horizon was made and why, you know, it became, you know, why are we in space and all that? Because they didn't really go into that either. Or even like a co- or even like a yes, comic, you absolutely. know, kind of like the way Buffy and Labyrinth went. They went into more of a comic. I think a comic would be better because even like you and I both said at the beginning of this, prequels, sequels, yep. remakes, 
usually are not better than the original. And if we were to sit here and beg and want for a prequel, you and I both know at the end of the day... I might not go see it or watch it, but the fact that they could fuck something up. <laughs> exactly. That's like... um. Even our in our in our Discord, you know, um, Fifty Cent John, um, he had uh, he had asked me if I had watched One Piece yet on Netflix. I told him I would. I am iffy. Iffy because One Piece One Piece is an anime that I did like growing up, and Netflix has not exactly been so kind and loving. Oh dear. They're never they good with anything. Watch. They suck. Now, I will say this, though. There is one series that is on Netflix that they did release that I absolutely enjoyed, and that was the Rurouni Kenshin. The three-part Rurouni Kenshin movie that they did from the anime series that was a live-action version of it, I, I thought, thought was you were going to I thought you were going to see the witch else? on us. Like, I'm going to come to your house and slap you, mate. Seriously. <laughs> it's like, if you think that's good TV. <laughs> It's like, I'm going to slap you. The, 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 I mean, <laughs> really the only thing that really made The Witcher great was Henry Cavill oh, and no. the <sighs> I have issues with that man. <laughs> That's all I'm going. I'm just going. No, I have <laughs> issues. Like, if I met him, I would probably slap the fuck out of him and just, like, there's a few people that would. Just, uh, he's my Superman, yes, but a real life person, I would want to slap the fuck out of him. The one thing I do like about Henry Cavall is he is kind of your down home, down home, laid back guy because he he enjoys video games and stuff like that. And when he became, I, I was remember reading an interview when he uh, did for The Witcher. He it was like a dream come true for him because because he did love The Witcher series. He loved the the games. Just having a fanboy playing a fanboy role was actually probably one of the best parts of the the series just because he was fanboying over a role that he got and you don't get too many actors and actresses no that he do that these days. he was such a fanboy of the games that he didn't even know it was a fucking book he had to be told so there's that and and then well, yeah, there's the I mean, fact that he claimed well he actually hounded to get that role he wasn't in the you know like short list it was him hounding to get that job the first season was okay but again the writer for that lauren she's a bit of a i'm not saying the word because uh, it's one of those ones that's frowned upon but we use as a term of endearment here in the scotland so i'm getting to the sea silent sea um so <laughs> yes <laughs> so i've not been a fan of netflix for a while because it's the same shite and it's the same stuff and i think it's incredibly annoying because there's so much out there like those other writers remember i said i've read better fanfic than I have some and watch movies on Netflix and that's the line I use all the time because there is better fanfic out there and I've wrote better fucking fanfic than some of the fucking scripts that yes. <laughs> Netflix pick up do you know what I mean? Uh, speaking of fanfic <clears throat> Are you a fan um, writer? Did you watch that? Uh, uh, I love watching it. I am not a writer, though. I love watching it, reading it, being a part of it, but I am not a writer. Did you watch that link that I sent in Which the Discord? Which link? What day and when? I can't remember how long ago it was. I think it was when we had when we all got into a discussion of fan fiction. What in the room Discord. are we talking so, about? Not safe for work one? Is... Or are we talking about an act? Because I live in not safe for work, mate. So, you know, I just literally linger and lurk in there because I can't be trusted to be on the regular threads with the regular people. This is this is true. I mean, that's where I linger too. Um, I can't remember, honestly, where I sent it. I'll have to send you the link in either our Discord or I want to know DM. what your number three is. I'm dying to know what your number huh? three is. Oh, my number three. It is... <gasps> Flatliner. Please tell me it's the original with Kevin Baker. Yay! It is, it is the original. Um, I that was not. Oh, we need a do Terrible. It was terrible. But the original, yes. That's a sad movie, though. The but flat. It is. It's a very sad movie, but it is a very visually pleasing yes. movie. The acting from all the actors that was amazing. Acting. did a great job. I mean, you had not only yeah. I mean, you had just a you had a, a bang up cast. I mean, to go through it, there was. Kiefer Sutherland, Kevin Bacon, Julia Roberts, William Baldwin. I'm not now. I I will say this. I am not a big Baldwin brothers fan. Yes, I'm. I'm just not a big fan of the Baldwin's brother. To be honest, I think their acting is subpar. Um, but William Baldwin, I thought did a very very good job as yes, Joe Hurley. Everybody's picked. And then you had also on top of that another actor that I do love, which is yes, he's Oliver brilliant. Platt. No, he again. I love him in movies. So. He, he is. 
He is. So I, I definitely love Flatliners for, and, and even the soundtrack for that movie was actually halfway decent. It wasn't the greatest, but it was halfway decent. So 1990, you claiming you don't have good movies in the year you yep. on. Yep, you're exactly born. <laughs> you, know, you actually have fucking legitimately good fucking movies the year you were born. So jealous. And I think it's like, I, re- I love Kiefer Sutherland. He gets a bad rep for like the way some of the way he acts apparently as an actor. Like he's 24 or something like He's a bit of a dick apparently. But it's like, he's Kiefer fucking Sutherland. Like he can be a dick if he wants to be. Leave him alone. It's mm-hmm. Kiefer fucking Sutherland. Every goth girl's vampire wet dream, basically. My God. Do you know what I mean? Every, every girl. Mm, exactly. Pretty much, the yeah. fuck he wants, man. He can rock a mullet. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Don't knock him. He can rock a fucking yeah. mullet. But, I mean, the movie in itself just had a a premise that a lot of movies... It basically was its own original movie. It, it didn't try to remake nothing. It didn't try to copy anything. It didn't have... um. It didn't have a lot. I mean, it it, it was to where I thought was absolutely perfect for its time because 90s and above, they were starting to try to do so many sequels, so many prequels, so many of these things that led on the same premise of what the originals were based off of. And with Flatliners, they couldn't do that. Like, the description on IMDb for Flatliners is five medical students experiment with near-death experiences until the dark consequences of past tragedies begin to jeopardise their lives. And again, that is when they're dead for, like, what, a couple of seconds or whatever, and they start increasing it. Yeah, and then we like think it's so, seconds. it's like a lot can happen in those 10 seconds because 10 seconds in that time is different from 10 seconds in our life. Like, they talk about in, again, Supernatural, do you know what I mean? Where you can be dead for, like, a minute and you literally felt like you've been away forever or you've not felt like you've been away at all and thinking where we are in 2023 we're not bringing people back do you know what i mean who have died after like you know i mean so flatliners came out in 1990 and not anyone near you know what they were trying to portray is something that we do now speaking of the remake the only thing that i thought was decent with the remake was they did bring Kiefer Sutherland they that had was to it. come on he was like a diversity hire i'm sorry but he is they fucking brought him in because he's like folk will come see this because he's in it it's kind of like the ghostbusters like the women's one they brought in pretty much every single vi- member of the original Ghostbusters trying to fucking sell the thing. There was no way that you're going to get original fan, fans of the fucking movie who went to the yeah. cinema to see Flatliners originally. And, I mean, they did, they did that with um Ghostbusters Afterlife too. They brought all the original That's cast bad. back, but that was after... That movie's so fucking bad. That was after... um Oh, I can't remember his name. Harold Dreamy. So they brought his ghost yeah, Harold Dreamy, yeah, it. my dad yes. had passed away and I'd seen it and I was in, I was in tears when I seen it because not every girl is ready to see their dad who they've not got to say goodbye to and stuff. It kind of like, it literally caused me to start bubbling like a baby when I had to walk the fuck away. I was like, seriously, Ghostbusters, really? I'm not ready for this shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, so it was, that was, I thought that was absolutely amazing. Again, the technology um, that we have today, we can randomly bring an old, like, a, an old character back and CGI him in, but we can't, you know, near-death experiences. Yes. <laughs> I mean, we've come a long way, but just not that way. <laughs> yeah exactly. not that far but yeah no so flat riders flat liners is my number three choice for that number one. two for me is <gasps> satim curry <gasps> wonder what it is dun 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 it is legend no applause man for fucking tim curry as the prince of darkness holy fuck and again tom cruise before he got the Hollywood teeth. Do you know what I mean? He's like he was like just all shiny technically yes. and new. Still had is not the big superstar Tom Cruise he is today. And again, I love the movie because again, there's un- there's a unicorn in it for one. Who the fuck would you not want a fucking unicorn? <laughs> so a unicorn makes the movie great. I absolutely love Yes. The fact that Tim Curry not only can be Frankenfurter, you know, the genius that brought a man to life. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And again, feeding off the the fear and memories of children. He is the Prince of Darkness. Now. And the actress who played Lily, I loved her as yes. well because she had gorgeous outfits. Her co- the costume design for that movie was fucking amazing. And the black oh, dress is something I've always Who was that? That was um actually. That was Mia, Mia Sarah, Mia Sarah, I think is her name. I had it in VHS, and again, I had it in 1985, yeah, Mia Sarah, uh, again, 
Oh, look at that man, Tom Cruise. He's been chin. And if I can remember, and if I can remember correctly, that was uh, directed by uh, Ridley Scott, wasn't it? Yes, it was. That is like again, when you watch a Ridley Scott film, it doesn't last long because it's so good. You're so fucking engrossed in it that you literally time just doesn't run the yeah. same when he did it. If you make if it makes sense when he's making a movie, he makes it so fucking visually great. Story is great. Everything works so well. The actors, everything. I just forget about time even existing you know when Ridley Scott is doing what he's doing very fucking talented director I really enjoy what he does so yes for me yes. Legend again watched yes, it I... as a child absolutely loved it watch it as an adult really love it would love Lily's dresses from when she's good and but because light and dark I love that black dress it was something that I would love to cosplay in at some point and I, I, again it's just it's all to do with the fact that it was such a fantasy like he was like the poor boy she was the princess it's forbidden and all that and watching that as a child it was always a forbidden story and then you get the prince of darkness enter tim curry man look at all awesome with his big massive chin do you know what i mean it's just like oh giving fucking bruce campbell a run for his money with that chin oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so i absolutely love that movie for many reasons the fact that i would watch it as a child absolutely loved it i wasn't a girly girl but i just love again it's mostly i love most things about movies but when it's good costume design then you see people cosplaying it years later you obviously love the film as much you know as you do and they're mm -hmm. cosplaying it and again it's one of those films that again you can introduce to your kid as well because it was a child friendly even though it's yes. a family friendly film the kind of dark aspects with the devil the prince of darkness it was still a kind of tongue-in-cheek way even like the deep voice was kind of comical and things like that as well but i again it's just one from my childhood that if it was ever like on tv i would be watching it put it that way yes absolutely oh my number two i'm gonna play a little on your uh your scottish side for my number two okay braveheart please don't say braveheart don't say hi I'm, I'm freaking out don't but unfortunately it is oh hard. that was terrible even had sean connery not playing the scottish character what the fuck Oh, yeah, no. and see sean connery is the main reason why i love yeah, highlanders oh it growing up it was a it, i was growing up i was big into uh swords so when it was about a a, a swordsman who was immortal who was blind who was stoking about people in the face that's what he was doing because Christopher <laughs> Lambert had the problem with sight, but he couldn't yeah. hold the sword properly, and he couldn't wear glasses because obviously, what Highlander wears glasses? No, that couldn't he be. But no, he was apparently not very good with the sword. Yeah, that one. That is. That's one. Of, that's my number two. Nostalgia up, again. The was, third one uh, I did like. The third one I liked. So was the first one. The first one had the soundtrack of Queen as well. well that's what probably made that film the best because that was such a yes. heroic song, man. The solos and everything. Oh, fucking hell, man. I want to listen to that. Another reason why I loved the movie was one of my grandfather's uh, favorite movies growing up. So it was a movie that I would watch. Um, so that's where I Are you going to it. introduce your son to um, it when he's of age to kind of understand it? Ten years probably you in the tradition probably. most likely will um so that is that's again that's one of the reasons why i love the movie is just because it does remind me of my grandfather and what do you think that the new movie it's not even a movie it's coming out now the highlander uh, is going to be another shitty tv show we've already had a highlander tv show it was not good yes it was we terrible. did and it was Kinda not like good Poker Guys, legacy i love it but it's cheesy and wrong I love the original series of Hellraiser. That new one that they came out with, I was not a big fan. No. And it, it, a lot of the, see the amount of different Cenobites that they've brought in for like different movies to evolve, obviously, to make it more risky. Like dogs yeah. for crying out loud, come on. Really? No. <laughs> it's like, can you not just keep that, can you not just keep the original? Yeah. Cenobites, they were scary and creepy enough as it is. I swear to God, I shut my eyes and can fucking see them right now. Yep. I mean, still freak me the fuck out. That's that's mainly the reason why I chose Highlander for number two is have you because of my recently? grandfather. I have I watched it nah, not recently. Uh, it'd probably be the beginning of the year, just because I was in one of my moods. Um, I had uh lost my uncle 
It was a year and a half ago, almost two years now. He was basically my grandfather's twin. And why nobody knows why. So it, yeah, I was in my fields at the beginning of the year, so I watched Thailand. I don't really have really much, too much to touch up, to touch on. Like I said, Sean Connery is one of the main reasons why I did watch it because I was a big Sir Sean Connery fan. Um, just growing up, you know, watching him in Bonds, Indiana Jones. So it just, it was, it, he was, he's an actor that, although he's aged, he doesn't age. He is he he's like fine wine. The the older he gets, it, honestly, I feel like he gets better. Do you with think age. if he was still alive today that he would so, literally be still a panty dropper? Absolutely. That that guy just. I mean, he could. Drop yeah, but he died on Halloween. I mean, he died in Halloween. Well, just put it that oh. way. So he's technically yeah, not gone. He can come, he can he, come he's, back. He's coming. He, he, exactly, he's he comes coming, back every year. Back. What are they talking about? He's <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously, they didn't like cash in in that one. October thirty. That's, that's been three years. Fucking hell! It's wow. Flew in. So are we ready to talk about number one? Number one. Yeah, let's uh, let's get well, into our number one. This is. Again, I this movie came out in 1987. I think it came out in 1988, actually, in the UK. But it has Jennifer Connelly and David Bowie. Yeah. And we have Labyrinth. Why do I love Labyrinth? Again, of course it is. David Bowie. Of course it's Jared. <laughs> what I say? I'm a big Jared fan. Um, but come on. It was very 80s. It was very flamboyant. And everything was made... It's another one of these movies where the sets were made. Nothing was, you know, created from, like, computer-generated. It was all made. All sets were made. Even the hand wall was all different people on the uh, the crew. And they all had to literally... It was like a choreography dance. Them having to figure out, you know, their hands and the facial expressions they used with their hands and stuff. So you had that. Then, again, you... So many different aspects. The soundtrack, yes. Who doesn't love Do You Remind Me of the Babe? Come on, the babe of the power. The power of voodoo, who do, do what? You remind me of the babe? Of course everybody fucking loves that. And I absolutely love Within You because it's, again, a really, really sad song of him saying creepily that he's in love with a teenage girl. It was the 80s people this was not frowned upon and neither was the fact that the man should have been wearing a cup because when you're watching it on a 150 inch home cinema screen at one point you can literally see his penis and his helmet and a child family friendly movie that you would have seen in a tiny wee screen. Now you can't get overseen that as a fucking adult. Imagine a fucking child witnessing that. It was the 80s I get it. You know, swinging free, whatever. No shame in here. But come on, hey, fuck. It's a kid's film. And you're stoking about with a baby. And you've got, like, little um, puppets right at your crotch. <laughs> one of which that comes onto your leg. And you kick it away. And it's really right at your crotch. It's just inappropriate. So watching that as an adult. Hello. Was not expecting that. Because it's, again, on a tiny wee ass screen. I'll, again, love it. Good versus evil. But I don't think Jareth was evil. And I do get a lot of people saying, why? Why do you not think Jared is evil? Because Jareth didn't actually do anything wrong. She was the one who said, I wish the Goblin King would come take you away. And then she says nothing. And then the wee puppet comes in and says, that's not how you say it. You're supposed to say, I wish he would come and take me away right now. And when she says, right now, then everything changes. And then Jareth appears because she's literally summoned him to come take her brother so she can go play with herself. Not in a wrong way, but play with, who knows, go to the park and play out um, a movie or something so she can basically play with herself. Basically, it sounds wrong, but it's literally her, so she can go do what she wants because she doesn't want to babysit her brother. I was like, okay, so you basically just wish your child to be ab your brother to be abducted. So she's actually the evil one in this. Jareth was only doing something because he was summoned. That was his job. And then she comes back. Then she goes to the labyrinth to try and win him back. And he has to basically stop her. Because she's basically neglected her brother. And he was going to look after him. There was plenty of babysitters. Do you know what I mean? All those goblins running about the place. So he'd been a better. Yeah. He would probably have been better living there. Because she didn't care. And that's just how I see it. Is the fact that Sarah is the evil one. But I still thought it was a bit creepy when you're a parent, again, 
you see the fact that he was an old man. Not not about age. Age is only a number and all that. But it's she was supposed to be playing what a thirteen or fourteen year old girl, and he was a man of whatever age he was, and he was in another universe. He could be hundreds of yes. years old. Hundreds of years old. You don't know that. So it was a bit creepy. I love Jim Henson. Yep. And it's a nostalgic film. Again, Labyrinth, they have not fucking remade it, so I'm very, very happy about that because I don't think I can get behind that. There's just they would ruin it. The story would be the exact same story and they wouldn't even try I don't even think they would even Well, you know there's comics, don't you? After like the original movie, it's been released as a comic. So the story mm-hmm. is about Toby. Do you know what I mean? It's Toby. It's so would they probably incorporate that in the story? No, I don't think they yeah. would. They'd pro- they probably wouldn't even know that it was a fucking comic or they've tried to, you know, continue the story on because maybe they thought we don't have enough like we don't have enough like a uh, like what writing to actually content to actually make it a movie, so why don't we just write about it? Because again you can draw really cool pictures and a lot of the time people are just looking at the pictures and not reading it, you know, and taking what they are from the pictures. It depends on how you read a comic, I suppose. It's a family movie, even though it has content like that through David Bowie's crotch. It's still a family movie. And again, it's visually beautiful, story's very good, and it keeps most kids' attentions when you watch it because there's so much going on. I mean, speaking of, you know, family-friendly movies, and it had Mr. Bowie's crack in it. I mean, that's the same way with The the Abyss. I don't yes. know if you've ever seen The Abyss. There, I mean, there's, yeah, it's it's family-friendly-ish, but there, I mean, there's part in it where they have to revive the girl, and they rip off her wetsuit, and... Ta-da, yes. ta-da. Yeah, I mean, back in, you know, the 80s, 90s, nudity was welcomed in the movie screens. I mean, for Christ's sake, let's look at Basic oh. Instinct. <laughs> so, I mean, back back in the day, it was welcomed, even though at the time, having a character play a young girl and the other one being who knows how old. I mean, it just, that one kind of made little to no sense of, well, that could be technically on-screen pornography, even though they might have both been of age or of consent, or one of them being of consenting age. It still is to the point of that could be on screen child pornography, but back in the, the 80s, the yeah, 90s, it was socially you know, nobody acceptable. Gave a fuck. And you couldn't have that. Now. It's real time yeah, for so, 30 years later, isn't it? 30? 30 years later. Yes. That you can't. Like 30 years. We're going for 80s, years it's 40 years. Yeah, yeah. 40 years, yes. We're 40 years in the future, and we've actually went backwards in cinema. Things you can't show. Things you can't do, things you can't see. What the? F- yeah. It's yeah. like, are you kidding me? We're not getting better, age. We're going fucking. We're literally going way backwards to a time that I don't even think existed. You're creating this new thing that no one gives a fuck about and yeah, no one cares, and everybody's just like, what? Because next minute it's up, it's down. Do you know what I mean? It's been changes from day to day basis, man. Mental. So what's your number one? So my number one, it's. Uh, I I had a hard time choosing. Really? My oh, I I've um, got to say I did change mine a few times uh, because I, I, I couldn't. Did. No, my number one stayed the same. Right. I, I did have a hard time choosing my number one. It is one. a tough spot to fill. Well, I mean, I had a hard time choosing. It is. It, it definitely is, especially if you want to go with stuff that you grew up on, or even stuff that might have been visually impactful now because of just the way the uh. The cinematography has become, you know, visual-wise. All in all, I landed on Aliens. Seriously, I had that as my night changed it. <laughs> but I'm not just talking about the 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 a single yeah, Alien the movie. Movies. I'm actually talking the series, and, stuff. and e- including Prometheus. And a lot of people would give me shit for it, but. Even the Alien versus Predator well, movies all are included. They all have a place in that actual universe if you actually know the movies and the lore, unfortunately. But not everybody is a lore lord, as they put it, when it comes to that, unfortunately. No, and 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 that's what, like, watching Aliens, watching Predator, knowing the lore, and then even if you didn't even want to care to watch the lore. You have Aliens versus Predator Between that the actually explains the, the lore. Yes, and yeah. then you have Prometheus that explains the whole backstory of the aliens. If, if everything, yeah. Yeah, it was absolutely, that, that movie was phenomenal. Um, aliens, the series in general, 
I honestly thought Sigourney Weaver did a an amazing job, and then she did a even better job when they decided to take the route of actually hosting yeah, her body as yes, a compatible, suitable companion. Yep. She became mother, queen. basically. So that, that honestly, that to me, what is what it was? It was. That's what made the movies you know, for me. Um, was the, the acting resurrection? Do you not feel like slapping them because they've all got a place? It's not like they've put in a sequel just for the sake of it. That's that sequel's in there for a fucking reason. If you actually have watched the movies before, but people don't exactly. fucking like it, and that's what I really don't like about it, the fact that they've not watched obviously or taken no, in anything. Exactly. Resurrection had its place in the series, just like Alien vs. Predator has its place in the series, even though that's why I get a lot of shit, because they're like, well, Alien vs. Predator wasn't that great of a movie. It may not have been. It was a great movie, but it may not have been the best movie of the series. I think it had its place, if you know what I mean. It wasn't. It, It did. It had its place. It had its place to explain why... The Predators and the Aliens were, they were basically combining the universe. They were like, well, we have Predators, which had Arnold Schwarzenegger in it. And then we had Predators 2, which had Danny Glover in it. And then you had Aliens, which had Sigourney Weaver. And it had a lot of bang-up cast members in that movie also. Um, especially the the gentleman who played, oh, what is his name? What is his character's name? I'm going to have to look it up real quick. Corporal Hicks. Michael Bean. Uh, Bart? no, not Corporal Hicks. Nate Rises. The um, the guy who played the the oh, AI. Lance Henriksen Bishop. Yes, Bishop Lance Henriksen. Yes, he did a phenomenal job playing a artificial intelligent for a movie that was released in '79. Or, well, I mean, where you're depends from. on yeah when you want to actually know where you're from and when you actually want to say that he actually came to be. Because if I can remember, he wasn't intelligence to begin with they used his subconscious in a artificial intelligent body but i could be wrong uh, i'm not exactly 100 percent sure on that you get a lot of people that are like well aliens versus predator was horrible no if you want to go with anything that was horrible we'll take yeah. predators when it had um adrian brody danny and Chilean. danny trey to where it was it was basically trying to remake predator movie from what arnold schwarzenegger yeah. was in that's that was horrible. They tried oh to God. remake it. Tilford Grace. And it was <sighs> it was that's terrible. Yes, Tilford Grace. They they had so much opportunity with that movie because they took an aspect of instead of the predators invading our world, we get basically sent the worst people to a battleground of the predators. They had so much they could have done with that movie and had great opportunity to it. Yeah, they feel and they destroyed they deliver. it. Because, again, telling you've got all this available and you only, like, kind of just scratch the surface and then add your own shape. It just not, makes no fucking sense. Exactly. Now, The Predator, the one that was released not too long ago, I think it was, like, 2019? Uh, 2018. Yeah, 2018. Yeah, the, right, I've seen this. I definitely have. And, because I remember how many yes, so that, they so. did. I honestly thought that 2018 version was actually pretty good um, because it was a complete different aspect of the predator movie now you have a predator coming to earth to actually try to save earth because he is being hunted by a bigger predator or a predator hunter as i guess they called it but i mean not only that it had a bang up cast on top of that it had trevante rhodes it had boyd holbrook and i love Mm -hmm. Boyd Thomas Holbrook. Jane is well. He's an amazing actor. Awesome and funny. It, Olivia Munn. Thomas Jane. Yvonne Stavosky, and, who was in Chuck. Again, there's lots of people yep. who aren't big characters that have me have make a big impact when they're actually on screen. Just because you might have not seen them in something doesn't mean that they're not. Oh my God, forgot the bussies in it. <laughs> you always notice one of them around yes. your mouth, don't you? They yes. all look the same. Yes. So. That's why I said I had a hard time choosing my number one because it was either Alien or it was going to be Predator. And you can't really have one without the other because the Overlap. universe does align once they do Overlaps Alien versus Predator. Creating more 
of a university expanding where like we've said plenty they could do so much i would love them to actually look at maybe a new writer that's maybe starting out that that's their kind of forte is like you know horror and sci-fi using classic concepts and then just like we're using exactly. someone who's completely different right now especially this is the second writer strike we've had i remember the first one and it totally screwed tv shows like heroes and lost even though lost was a bit shite to be after the first season anyway but uh these shows were yeah oh <laughs> lost that went away on tangent started on lost lost yes it made me angry too angry. like i wasted all this fucking time and i had figured out the ending from episode one okay then what the fuck so who the fuck is a polar bear in the middle of fucking desert island what the fuck what drugs are you smoking man because what the fuck yeah nothing they're all in purgatory because they're all dead spoilers spoilers for anybody spoilers who have don't not waste seen time. It, but don't waste your time. i'm doing a ruin five for seasons you. of <laughs> because five seasons of every episode to piss you off to figure out at the usually. very end at the very end that they are in purgatory they're because they're all life. dead and they're all dickheads in life they... remember that's why they're there and they're all waiting for everyone because they're all dickheads <laughs> and they don't go to the nice place yes it's weird and goes off on a tangent and it doesn't make any fucking yes. sense whatsoever but no heroes was a good show and that I got thought... canned and went crazy and again that went all fucked up after like the writer's right and then season three so and then they tried to reboot it reborn or something or rebirth and it was shite absolutely terrible uh but again the... there is on netflix because you did bring up heroes and it is more of a family friendly kids show but i actually enjoyed it um I mean, let me is think it if i action? can remember the name of it is it live action it's a live action have you not noticed that yes just before the pandemic there was a really there was quite a few a, a, well it was a couple of really good supernatural type tv shows that netflix actually like there was lock and key obviously that had some mystery and fantasy but there was another one that was based on a family that was actually it was really based good. on a family it was like they were part of an organization that fought you know supernatural beings and their kids were actually coming into their powers because they were actually they was it they rescued them from one of their missions and you're starting to find out that they were hunting they were hunted and killed basically the birth mother and the birth mother was literally trying to you know it was i think they were witches of some sort so therefore they were coming at their power because of coming of age that had a uh, camille from bones in it she was in it uh sure the guy the guy a guy was in it as well he was a uh, in the blacklist but there's again loads of people but just before lockdown there was like really good shows and then when lockdown happened other shows were being released but then shows like that because they kind of like under the carpet like under the rug because so many things so much content was coming out when everything was starting to get back up after the first strike it was like that there was nothing and then there was like independent writers at college before they actually joined the like the screen actors guild and the writers actors guild they need to really and even just look on fanfic sites because you'll probably find someone writing better than some of the people you're sitting paying a fuck ton of money in a writer's room to do fucking nothing and actually churn out a story that people might want to fucking watch and it could be like the next big tv show or movie or legacy or something like that but no i think we'll be holding our breath that yeah shadow and bone i really yeah, we did, did like. watch there was that and there was i don't know if you've seen I shadow think and bone. we've watched that but we also watched that that other joss whedon thing that he's not going to be writing even though it's his tv show that was kind of supernatural kind of based in the kind of victorian times as well so victorian times seems to be in again like sherlock Ho anola Holmes, sorry type thing because there's like that i actually of, enjoyed anola i like the Holmes. first one but the second one i muted it and just commented every time henry cavill spoke <laughs> Don't ask. <laughs> we'll be here all day. <laughs> uh, another one that I actually cared that was a Netflix series too, and it was um, it was called oh, the Warrior Nun. Oh, fucking Nun. love Warrior Nun. That was crazy as fuck. Oh my god, she wasn't chosen yet. She could have it. What the fuck? Oh, mind blowing. Yes, it was so good. I don't know which channel yes. it's on in America. It's called Miss Mrs Davis, and it's a woman who's a nun, and it's about AI and stuff. That was mental. But that's not getting another series that literally just ended and it was so good. It kind of reminded me of how American Gods started out. You know, like the new gods, and which was technology and the old gods. You know, the way the kind of new gods. 
That's where it kind of reminded me that like, she was keep keeping away from the AI because the AI can literally like possess anybody, which is creepy as fuck. And that's probably where we're going to go in the future, unfortunately. <laughs> it's going that way. Terminator's going to happen. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm just trying to, while we're talking about things, I'm just trying to find this TV series because I can't remember the name of it. Warrior Nun's been cancelled or has it been renewed again? Warrior Nun get cancelled. Uh, I think they're doing yeah, one more season of it. Because there was a big uproar about it because it was one of the biggest shows and they were cancelling it. Kind of like when they did that to Hannibal, one of the biggest, was it HBO shows, got cancelled and it was not even touched the surface of that universe. And how do I like that? Which suck balls. Uh, I mean, they did the same thing with um, Lucifer as well. Cancelled it on Fox Netflix, and then... and then fans just totally like, yes. But do you not think it was sad when they killed off Detective Douche? And then they renewed it. I was, but they did bring him back again. Spoilers if you haven't seen Lucifer, where the fuck have you been hiding? It was sad right. again. So sad. But again, I had worked out who the character, you know, they brought in. Was it Trixie? I had, all, not Trixie, Trixie's her daughter, the now. Was it Aurora? Uh, yes. You'd already figured it out with her wings and everything, who she was. So the, the TV series is called Raising Dion. Dion as in D I O N or D Y O N? Yes. Yeah, right, okay, give me a second, I'm just going to look for that. Yep, Raising Dion. Okay, Beyond. so it's a wee boy who's a superhero, or has superhero powers. Yep. I don't, that wasn't on Netflix here, in the United Kingdom, because I would have watched that. Yeah, it was actually really good, like, I it was actually to do with money, thoroughly I enjoyed it. Cancelled it. Again, um, no, I'm, I'm going to have to look for that now. How many, two seasons from 2019? Mm-hmm. Does it have an ending? No, was it one of those ones that literally is left on a fucking cliffhanger? If I can remember correctly, I do believe they did end it. If I can remember correctly, I do believe they did end it. I, I thought Heroes was a great series, and when I... Heroes, or after the right or strike, when they fucked it. Um, well, in my honest opinion... You know, I'm not 100% so In my sure honest opinion, on is it before they fucked it or after? I'm not 100% sure. Because there still was um, aspects of the original show from when they fucked it, but they just managed to fuck it. Yes. Yes, and they did kind of fuck it in a big way. For childhood, I didn't dislike any films because going to the cinema wasn't something we did every week because we didn't have the money to do it. And when we did go to the cinema, it was like a one in four. Like you, like my mum would pick one time, my dad would pick another. My brother, the prince, the king of all, everything, he got to pick. And then you'd get to pick. Uh, so it was like maybe a couple of times a year you got to go to the cinema and then if you did get a rental like every Friday I would pick this same film all the time which was The Flash where it was a mini series so it was three parts so I picked that every time so when we were watching the only thing I didn't like was my brother like terrible badly dubbed kung fu movies and I was subjected to them for the full weekend and they were <laughs> awful and to the point where I would uh... imagine I was in somewhere I was somewhere else um which is weird because I like kung oh the kung pao written the piss out of it because it pretty much reminded me of how I felt every time I had to watch and subjected to one of those stupid fucking films like it was like mafia versus ninja now if I can find that on IMDb that was terrible Maf- I don't even know how my brother became obsessed with these right it came out in 1985 yeah it was the first one no it might have been the same. No, it was an 18 as well. And it's apparently about sewage workers Jack and Charlie get involved in an international Asian gang war when Jack helps the boss of Shanghai gang against one of the rebellious underlings. This underling then strikes a deal with a Japanese Yakuza and the hopes of toppling his boss and become the leader of Shanghai himself. When the Yakuza assassinate the Shanghai boss, Jack pledges to avenge what? Avenge what? Because it just stopped there. Avenges his new friends as there. As he seeks out those <laughs> ultimately responsible, he does battle with a variety of ninjas and mercenaries from around the world. Of course you fucking do. You're not in, like, you know, your jammies in your mum's fucking basement, you know, pretending to fight people. That's the kind of shit that my brother would watch. It was boring, and that's the kind of things we'd end up watching at the weekend. So if it was anything, it was terrible. And I don't, and I'll use all three of mine for that. All three is all those fucking movies that my brother subjected me to growing the fuck up because he'd try and act like he was a ninja and just basically try to beat fuck out of you because he was that type of Dickensian. I'd like to say much has changed since childhood because he's just a douche. So I've gave you all my free because that was probably the most horrific time of my childhood <laughs> is that. Because they're terrible. You can check out Mafia vs Ninja on IMDb if you want to see how incredibly terrible 
the artwork is. So now you can tell me your three. Oh, all right. So, I was shot in so my three, one of them, I did grow up in the time of watching sorry. Diddy Kong Fu movies. <laughs> and or no, no, don't 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 be sorry because I mean, not really a big fan of it myself. My num my first one, and I probably will get a lot of backlash and comments or anything like this for this one because it did end up becoming a very big movie for a lot of people, and Fish that is Crouch. Yep, I have it never is seen a... it. Terrible. So uh, terrible. I can remember. I can remember the actual. See, like I'd, you obviously still get them in America. See, at bus stops you get like the stuff for the movies. You know the advertisements, like the posters. I remember seeing the poster for Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, because it was everywhere when it came out. Because it was like, oh, you know what I mean. So, like this amazing movie coming out so therefore it was a blockbuster wasn't it so, and then th that sort of film was literally a blockbuster and would get bums on seats apparently definitely not mine ever yeah so that's my third one um my second one oh is it difficult because we like oh. so many movies it's incredibly difficult it has to be completely shit for you actually to think it's a shit movie though like it has to hit all the markers of it's shit, 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 yeah. shit, shit. If it hits two of them, then the it's not really one shit. That I am it's gonna pick this one is going to be Rob days. Zombie's Murder <laughs> That was, yes, I agree. It was not the best one, and it was weird. It made no sense. So, as I explained to people, I absolutely disliked Lords of Salem. If you put it as a background aesthetic to when you're passing out candy for trick or treating on Halloween, it plays perfectly fine. No volume, just the movie playing in the background. It makes a perfect background piece for passing out trick or treating, uh, passing out candy for trick or treating. But the movie, in my opinion, isn't that what he did horrible. though? He tried to make it visually scary because he had random noises and stuff. See, like when it's like she's kind of like, see, from yes. what I can remember of the film, because I just was interested because it's Rob Zombie. You know, I absolutely love Rob Zombie and White Zombie. I love his music. Do you know what I mean, I just again would watch something because it sounds terrible, but everybody does. If you like Rob Zombie, you will watch all his shit because you want to be that fucking fan that knows everything of the thing of the people that obviously that you watch and you know listen to and music you like and your hobbies, if you will. When I watched it, I was just like, I thought he actually had made it that way for a reason though. See, like the kind of aspect of like an image where you don't need sound, like back in the day where you had like the first music video and it was in the twenties and it was nineteen twenties. It was literally just like silent film. Because the images themselves were just as powerful as hearing the music. They didn't have it together. It was separate. So obviously, silent pictures, depending on what you were seeing, it would basically be... It could literally scare the shit out you. You never fucking know. There's still the thing about The Exorcist, that one image of the lamppost and the priest that still scares the shit out of people. Do you know? <laughs> Don't know why, but... Uh, but my first one, he... Uh... He just, to me, did not do a good job at playing a character for this role. And I'm, the movie I'm going to say, again, probably will get some backlash, is going to be Hills Have Eyes. Right, that's Three. fine. There was a big long pause because I literally had my mic up and I was literally saying to you, are we going to have an argument? Are we going to bonk heads? Is that what's going to happen? First podcast. No. And we're fucking like, oh, fuck you. I mean, I hate you. No, no but no, I understand. <laughs> I understand. Yes. Um, it's like for a lot the of you aspect genre, of the movie terrible. itself, because I did love the original, the remake, I just thought the acting was so subpar to where they tried to do something that didn't need to be done with a movie. You had a great Big name actor in The Hills Have Eyes played so many roles and everything like that. Ted Levine was a is a great actor. I just thought his move his acting in that movie At those least so far it's the was remake and not the original. But that is the one thing that threw me off was knowing he is a great actor and knowing he was going to be on The Hills Have was Eyes. Was it the script by any chance, not him, or the fact that he was given something shit to deal with and he just had to make it work? I'm probably going to say it was the script, because he is a great actor. It just, I just don't think that role fit him and or the script did not fit him. But either way, those are my top three. So would you just so, agree yeah, with I my mean... choice <laughs> of my hatred of those people? No. <laughs> not one bit um growing up i did you know kung fu movies and stuff like that uh subject to doing myself was never a big fan of them and that's mainly because well 
they were just shitty to be honest i mean there was no acting there was no visual format for the movie there are some that i did grow up to love and enjoy mainly most of them kids movie like the three ninjas strike back but those were those were kids movies those were visually stunning for kids um surf ninjas stuff like that but some of the bigger ones no and then you had on top of that the only movie that I really did like and enjoy growing up that kind of had anything to do with Kung Fu would have been, um, I think it was, the movie was called Drunken Monkey, and that was with Jackie All Chan. Right. I did not know that was in there. We got the little bit about each other's favorite movies, our dislike well, for Kung if, Fu movies. No, I see if you've watched <laughs> that film that I told you about that my brother, sorry, that my brother subjected me to. Anything but. So you got a lot of comedy aspects in horror movies these days. Stuff like that. So the movies themselves have not been remotely close to what they used to be or what yeah, they need to be. Sustainability for the future. Yeah. One of us could try, if you know what I mean. Like, if that didn't work for me, you could try. Housekeeping yep, and thing before. It. And then we'll start recording. I'm just writing this down to keep Matt right. No, you're fine. And then, and then pretty much, like, before we do the whole the whole sign off here in a, in a minute like this whole last five six minutes of just us bumbling on and making cracking jokes and stuff could be yeah. edited out before we do the guys as you can see this is you know this is us this is we we joke we laugh we had you a good time <laughs> um you heard both of our set of yes said inappropriate things you've heard our likes of movies if you guys have any movies that you um of what you guys like of what you guys dislike um and if you guys want us want to know why we or what we think of what movies you guys pick for us we would greatly greatly appreciate it and we would greatly love to touch on those movies for you guys and give us give you guys our feedbacks anything you want to say <laughs> don't um no um just like again tell us do you agree with what our five choices were is there things that you would maybe say, nah, that's not right? Is there some things you disagree with that we have touched on here on this first ever popping our metaphorical cherry on the podcast journey? Let us know in the comments below and you can catch us on, again, I have YouTube, you have YouTube. And again, we'll put any links to any social media platforms in the description below and you can check out some other content. And I'm Darcy Darkness. Till next week. Till next week. This is Lunar Rising. Have a good one.